All right, folks, before we get this party started, please take a peek under your seats for a surprise. I'm not sure if you heard me the first time, but I asked if you could please take a quick peek under your seats. You might have looked under your seat due to trust. Trust in the voice or trust in the message that you received. Or you could have simply been deceived. Did you know that the latest research from Microsoft can clone your voice from just a three second clip? This means that we can now type text into a computer and have it speak exactly like you from just a three second clip of your voice. Technology has advanced and continues to advance and with it comes its use in deception. As a professor of computer science and currently at Louisiana State University, I have been studying cybersecurity, digital forensics, and deception in various systems. And what I'd like to share with you today is foundational knowledge related to deception that you can take away and apply to any future technology that you may encounter. This all started a couple of years ago when my students and I were exploring the security of virtual reality systems. And on the first day of the project, we immersed ourselves in virtual reality. And what we found was disturbing. We found that kids were being groomed, and we found that adults were being constantly abused. And we asked ourselves, is this, was it a freak occurrence, or is this something that happens on a regular basis? So we took a little deep dive into the statistics. According to the Center for Countering Digital Hate, every seven minutes, a kid is being abused in virtual reality. And research by Jessica Outlaw found that 36% of men and 49% of women have experienced some sort of sexual assault in virtual reality, be it uh, being shown a lewd pic, being groped, or any other form of sexual activity you can think of. It's important to note that while these things happen in virtual reality, the psychological impact is the same as it would be in the real world. Well, what do we do in order to cure this problem? We have to think about the broader issue. Think about how many deceptive emails you receive on a daily basis. And think about the last time you posted something on Facebook Marketplace and the number of deceptive messages you received. As a father and as a scientist and as a concerned digital citizen, it became very clear to me that we have to study this problem. And now my research focuses on the intersection of deception and technology and their interrelationship. But in order to fully understand and grasp the problem, we have to study the security of these systems. And my students and I found several technical vulnerabilities that allowed us to exploit virtual reality. Today, I would like to talk about three attacks that we conceived in virtual reality. The first attack I would like to talk about is the disorientation attack. This attack makes you feel dizzy. It affects your physiology. You can probably feel dizzy from simply looking at this video. Does anyone feel dizzy looking at this video? Yeah. All right, should I change it? <laughs> All right. The second attack I would like to talk about is the man in the room attack. In this attack, you could be in a virtual room with other people. You can see them, you can hear them, but they can't see you and they can't hear you. Think about the privacy implications of that. When you can hear everything somebody does, everything that they do, but they can't see you and hear you. And think about how that could be used for deceptive purposes. You can see Josh the attacker and Bob the victim, where Bob can't see Josh, but Josh can see Bob. And lastly, this is a more novel attack that we created called the human joystick attack. In this attack, we showed that we are capable of moving people from one location to another without their knowledge or consent. Physically, you might ask yourself, how can we do this? Where are we right now? Manship theater. It's very difficult for me to lift up the manship theater or move it to the front or move it to the back. But in virtual reality, it's a possibility. If an attacker gains access to your system, you can move the room to the front and to the back and humans compensate for that movement. You can see on the left hand side, a victim that is moving from the bottom side of the screen where there's a green cross and they move to the red dot. 
That's what they actually did when we moved the room. And on the right-hand side is what they thought they did. They thought they remained within the vicinity of the Green Cross. You might be asking yourself, why did we do this? Well, there's two main reasons. The first is to show the security weaknesses in virtual reality. And the second is, we can't protect against attacks if we don't know how to create them in the first place. But in, technology isn't the problem, at least it's not the only problem. Humans use this technology on a daily basis, and they communicate using this technology. And this is why, for a brief second, I would like to share with you the Shannon Weaver model of communication. This model was created by a mathematician and an engineer to model how communication works using the internet or the telephone system. But guess what? We could also use it to model how humans communicate. You can see that there's a sender, there's a receiver, there's a feedback loop, and there's a communication channel. And there's also the fact that humans process communication when they receive it. But what I'd like you to take away from this model is two things that an adversary would use against you. The fact that there's a channel that they can attack, and the fact that they can attack the way we process information as human beings. First, there's a channel attack. There's three kinds of channel attacks, and I would like to briefly explain them to you. The first is known as covert degradation, or hiding a message in a noise. What does that mean, to hide a message in a noise? Well, Consider a soldier that's been deployed, which is now being tested, and that soldier is wearing an augmented reality headset. Now, that soldier needs to know where they need to go, and they have a compass guiding them. If the attacker covers a part of that compass, then the soldier can no longer discern their location. Now, we'll talk about overt degradation, and this is about adding noise to a message. Again, consider the same example. And in this example, there's again a compass. But now they're adding noise to the compass so that it moves a lot to the left and a lot to the right. And if that keeps happening, then again, the soldier can no longer discern their location. And lastly, let's just delete the compass. Let's get rid of it. And that's what's called denial. Now, even though the examples I gave are in mixed reality, this could apply to any communication channel that you use, from Zoom to Facebook to social media to your cell phones to any other technology that you're probably posting right now with on Instagram. Anybody doing that? <laughs> then there's processing attacks. The first one is corruption. And corruption is also known as mimicry, where you're mimicking a real message. Remember that voice you heard in the beginning? How many fell for that? Okay, most of you did, because I saw it. <laughs> All right? That's the truth. That's corruption, right? You fell for a mimicked message that looked like a real message. And last, subversion. Subversion is a little more complicated. There's two steps to subversion. The first is you have to change someone's belief about something by using corruption. And the second step is to have them take some sort of an action. An example of that would be if a political candidate was running for office. And now, there's a video that's released about that political, political candidate, a fake video of them endorsing another political candidate that they never would have endorsed before. What happens then is people believe that message. And then what do they do? They vote against that candidate or for that candidate, but it changes the outcome of the election. And that's an example of subversion. Are you scared yet? Are you scared yet? Yes. All right. Well, the reality is you're probably thinking the best thing to do is to stop using technology altogether. <laughs> you're probably thinking, I want to stop using my cell phone. I'm going to stop using virtual reality. Abe, I hate you, man. Why'd you do this to me? <laughs> you should be scared. Because everything that we do today, everything from the water that you drink, to the electricity that we use depends on technology. We use it in our daily life so much in the critical infrastructure and in our banking and so on and so forth. So what do we do? Well, we can be diligent. You now know that there's two major types of deception attacks. There's a channel attack and there's a processing attack. So the next time you're about to click on that link or post something on Facebook Marketplace, 
or do anything that you might want to do, ask yourself, am I falling a victim for a channel attack or am I falling victim for a processing attack? If we did this collectively and we are proactive and we are diligent, we can create a safer and more trustworthy digital environment for all. Thank you.